tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The moment you've all been waiting for. We're actually going to play a game right here in this video, allowing us to see, now that we know all the rules, how one actually plays this freakishly complicated card game. This is about as basic as it is going to get. This is a sample game played using the E starter deck and the F starter deck. Um, they were meant to be pitted against each other so that people could learn how to play this game. If you want to follow along with the actual notation of the game, you can just look at this here site and you will see the actual listing of all the moves of the game. So we can just look at this and see how it's going to happen. So, playing field time. Uh, both players shuffle their decks, offered to their opponent to cut. Make sure you shuffle nice and well, because it's really unfortunate sometimes if you don't shuffle your deck properly. So, uh, player one over here draws Intent to Trap the Rich Young Ruler, Philetus, Foul Spirit, Angel of Revelation, Seth, Sign of the Rainbow, and Tree of Knowledge. Player 2 over here draws Shoes of Peace, Death of Jacob, Tabitha, Prochorus, Bad Intentions, Oppressive Women, Garden of Eden, and a Lost Soul. So player 2 drew a Lost Soul. He plays it immediately into his Land of Bondage and draws another card to replace it, Raised to Life. Player 2 got a Lost Soul, so he gets to go first. Brian 2 does not draw three cards to begin his first turn because it's his first turn. He plays Garden of Eden, the site, from his hand and puts his lost soul in it. And that's going to finish his turn. So then we move on to player 1. Player 1 also skips his draw phase. He puts the Tree of Knowledge site into his uh, site pile and he places the hero Angel of Revelation into his territory, not wasting any time because he notices that the Garden of Eden site in his opponent's uh, territory is silver, and Angel of Revelation is silver. Player 1 begins a rescue attempt with Angel of Revelation. Player 2 does not decide to block because he feels he can't do jack, Angel of Revelation is a powerful character, and he doesn't really feel up to facing it, so he surrenders the Lost Soul Lickety Split, and the score has already gone up to player 1, 1, player 2, 0. His turn is over, so play passes to player 2, who draws Ur, Esau the Hunter, and Laban. Or Laban. I pronounce it Laban, because I think that's closer to the original Hebrew. Ridic uh, uh, regardless, uh, player two puts Ur and oppressive women into his territory. He doesn't bother making a rescue attempt, so it play, uh, play passes to player one, who draws three cards, fifth seal, servant girl, and lost soul. Uh, the lost soul is placed immediately into the land of bondage, and player one draws a new card, servant angel. It's player one's preparation phase. So he puts the lost soul in his land of bondage into his tree of knowledge site. And then, even though there are no lost souls for him to rescue, player one gets it in his head to make a battle challenge anyway. Why? I don't know. I don't know if I shared with you before, but battle challenges can fuddle the crud out of me. Because usually they don't accomplish anything. This guy really has no reason to make a battle challenge, but he says lols. And so he puts Seth into the field of battle, which starts the battle challenge. Now, understand, player 2 doesn't have to do anything. Player 2 is really not being attacked. He is being offered a battle challenge. He doesn't have to accept it. But he does. So he puts an evil character to block Seth. So he goes ahead with Ur. Seth is losing by numbers. So 
Player one gets initiative and he activates the enhancement Sign of the Rainbow. Sign of the Rainbow would allow him to negate and discard the last evil enhancement played in current battle. No evil enhancement was played in the current battle, so that does absolutely nothing. Initiative passes to Ur. So, because, uh, yeah. So, Ur then decides to activate the Bad Intentions Enhancement, which brings him up to 9-9. Nine, nine. Seth is losing, and Player 1 doesn't do anything about it. So, Seth lost. Seth gets discarded, all enhancements in battle get discarded, and that is the end of that turn. What an accomplishment. Player 1 should slap himself across the face, and Player 2 should slap himself for even accepting the battle challenge, but I digress. It's player two. It's uh, yeah, player two's turn now. He draws three lost souls: Gaius, Freedom, and a lost soul. Sucks for him. He plays the lost soul into his land of bondage and draws a replacement, Murder. It's his preparation phase. Uh, Brian puts the lost soul into his sight, and then he puts Gaius into his territory. Since. Uh, since the Lost Soul in Player 1's um, Land of Bondage is in a gold site, it's only going to get rescued by a gold hero. Noting this, Player 2 decides to start a rescue attempt with the gold hero, Gaius. Player 1 blocks with the Foul Spirit evil character. One of the nastier cards in the entire game, it allows you to negate all special abilities on all character and enhancement cards. This is a double-edged sword, mind you. Foul Spirit negates all special abilities on characters and enhancements, except for his own special ability. That means anything that his opponent plays, and that does mean anything he plays. So, that can be problematic for both characters. Foul Spirit has initiative. So, he activates the enhancement Intent to Trap, which will bring him, bring him up 3-3, three, three, but the effect of Intent to Trap, much to his chagrin, is negated by his own special ability. Gaius is losing by numbers, so he proceeds to activate the enhancement Shoes of Peace. Again, Shoes of Peace will not have any special ability activate because it is negated by uh, Foul Spirit, but that's going to bring Gaius up enough uh, to cause Foul Spirit to be losing. Player 1 does not play any other enhancements, so Foul Spirit loses. He is discarded, as well as all enhancements used in battle by both the hero and the evil character. Player 1 hands over the Lost Soul in his sight. Don't ask me why, because he could have released the other one, but he decided to do that anyway. And that brings the score to 1-1. One, one. And remember, Gaius returns to his territory. So anyway, it's player 1's turn again. He draws Busy Body, Stormy Seas, and Guiding Angel. Player 1 proceeds to put Servant Angel into his territory, and he begins a rescue attempt with Servant Angel. Servant Angel enters battle. So his special ability activates, which allows player one to draw a card. He does so. It happens to be a lost soul. So the lost soul goes right into his land of bondage, and he draws a replacement, Jacob's grandsons. Player two blocks with Laban. Ah. Uh, so Servant Angel is losing quite a bit. And player one doesn't do anything about this fact, so Servant Angel loses immediately and goes right to his discard pile, and Laban goes to his opponent's territory. So that really didn't accomplish much now, did it? Oh well, he drew a card. That's why you should be more prepared when you make a rescue attempt, but I digress. Player one now has ten cards in his hand. He has to end his turn with eight or less. So, he proceeds to put the evil characters Philetus and the rich young ruler into his territory. Now it's player two's turn. He draws Archippus, Well Reopened, and Mentor. He puts Mentor and Tabitha into his territory during his preparation phase, and he proceeds immediately to make a rescue attempt with Mentor. Mentor is able to band to any New Testament 
human hero with five toughness or less. Player two selects his uh, New Testament hero, Tabitha, which has less than five toughness, is human, and is from the New Testament. So he bans her into battle, bringing him to a grand total of 1110, which means serious business. Also, the first time Tabitha is going to be discarded, she goes to her owner's territory instead, which is pretty cool. Player one gets scared off immediately by the double digits and surrenders the lost soul immediately to his opponent without blocking at all. That brings the score to player two, two, player one, one, and that will end player two's turn. Player one begins. He draws three, Grievous Departure, Peter's Lie, and Fruitless Tree. He skips his preparation phase completely and goes right to his battle phase, where he makes another rescue attempt with his trusty Angel of Revelation. Player two blocks this time with Laban, who has higher stats than Angel of Revelation. Angel of Revelation is therefore losing by numbers. Player one has initiative and activates the Crush card, Fifth Seal which will bring him up 3-3, three, three, allows him to search his discard pile for a hero and place it on top of his draw pile. He immediately chooses the servant angel that he lost so easily last time and places it on top of his deck for him to draw next turn. It also brings him up 3-3, three, three, so now Laban is losing by numbers. This time player 2 therefore has initiative, and he doesn't play anything. So Laban is being defeated, he is defeated, and is placed in his discard pile. Angel of Revelation returns to his territory, uh, Fifth Seal is discarded, and Player One gets another Lost Soul, which will bring us back to a tie. Now it is 2-2. Two, two. Player One ends his turn, and Player Two begins his. He draws the cards Deluge of Rain. God's Animals, and a Lost Soul. The Lost Soul is immediately put in the Land of Bondage, and then a card is drawn to replace it. Uh, yes, so he draws another Lost Soul, which kind of sucks. Um, but he then plays another, and uh, he places it into his uh, Land of Bondage, and he draws Wedding Party. So he... Uh, spends his preparation phase by putting progress in his territory. There is no lost soul that he can rescue. He makes a battle challenge with his Procorus. Player 1 is like, get that out of here. He does not accept the battle challenge, so Procorus just goes back to where he came from. And then Player 2 proceeds to put Archippus and Esau the Hunter into his territory. Player 1 is... Uh, it's his turn again. He draws the Servant Angel that he was able to uh, salvage from his discard pile. Uh, he also draws Lewd Men and a Lost Soul. The Lost Soul is immediately put into the Land of Bondage. He draws a replacement, Angel of the Lord. Quite the replacement. In his preparation phase, Player 1 puts his Lost Soul into his Tree of Knowledge site, and then he begins battle. He makes a rescue attempt with Angel of Revelation again. Player 2 blocks with Oppressive Women this time. Oppressive Women has initiative because she's losing by numbers, and proceeds to activate another crush card, Deluge of Rain, which discards all cards in battle. Player One can do nothing about the fact, so Angel of Revelation and Oppressive Women are losing by mutual destruction, by mutual removal. They are both discarded along with Deluge of Rain, and the rescue attempt is not successful because it's mutual destruction by mutual removal. So that didn't end up working. To end his turn, player one puts Servant Angel, Servant Girl, and Guiding Angel into his territory. It is player two's turn. He draws three cards, all three of which happen to be Lost Souls. Talk about no luck at all. He places all three lost souls into his land of bondage and proceeds to draw three new cards. Slave Trade, Dishonest Trader, and Love of Jesus. He skips his preparation phase completely and proceeds with a rescue attempt with his Gaius. Player 1 blocks with Rich Young Ruler. It is a mutual destruction by numbers at present. And the person who played the last card was Player 1. So it proceeds to Player 2. 
He has initiative, therefore, and he activates the Crush Card Wedding Party, which will bring him up to 10-10, and it allows him to search his opponent's deck for a lost soul and put it in his land of bondage, as if the guy doesn't have enough. <coughs> so, now he puts another lost soul into the land of bondage, and uh, Rich Young Ruler is now losing. He has initiative, and he activates the enhancement Lewd Men. This brings him up by 0-3, and it allows him to repel all female heroes. Much to his chagrin, Gaius is, in fact, a man. So, Lewd Men is not going to have any effect on the current battle except bring his toughness up a tad. He still has initiative because he still happens to be losing, so he activates the enhancement Fruitless Tree, which will bring him up by 2-3 and allows him to remove a hero in a territory from the game. He can't remove it from battle because uh, Fruitless Tree specifically states in a territory. So he chooses his opponent's Archippus and removes it completely from the game. Player 2 now has initiative and activates the good enhancement Well Reopened, which will bring him up 3-3 and allows him to draw a card. He does, and he draws the enhancement Lamplight. Rich Young Ruler is losing. Player 1 has initiative, but he doesn't do anything because he's unfortunately out of steam. Rich Young Ruler is defeated. He and all enhancements in play are discarded. And player two gets another lost soul for the count, which will bring this up to 3-2. Unfortunately, player two has a handful of enhancements, and he has nine of them. So he has to discard one of them, and so, much to his sadness, he discards the lamplight he just drew. So now it's player one's turn again. He draws three cards, Christian Martyr, Sixth Seal, and Priestly Crown. He immediately activates Priestly Crown, which will give all of his Old Testament male human heroes access to any site. Little does he know that this will not do anything for the remainder of the game, because he's not going to make any rescue attempts with any Old Testament heroes. So, sucks for him. Regardless, he activates it, and then he begins a battle attempt with, uh, rather, a rescue attempt with Servant Angel. He gets to draw a card again, because that is the ability of Servant Angel, and, much to his chagrin, he draws a Lost Soul. He places the Lost Soul immediately into his Land of Bondage and draws the replacement, Fountains of Living Water. Player 2 blocks with his Esau the Hunter. As long as Esau the Hunter is in, uh, is in battle, evil capture cannot be negated. This will come in handy later. Esau is losing, therefore has initiative, and activates the enhancement Murder, which will bring him up to 2 and allows him to discard a human hero with 5 toughness or less. Now, he could have activated this on Servant Angel were it not for the fact that Servant Angel has just a little more toughness than 5. So he has to choose something else, and so he selects the Servant Girl in his opponent's uh, territory to discard, and so he does so. Esau is... Uh, Esau is now winning... Uh, well, actually, no. Esau and Servant Angel are in a mutual destruction situation, and Esau played the last card. Servant Angel now has initiative, and so he activates the mighty Sixth Seal, which will bring him up to two, but that's not the point of Sixth Seal. Now, Servant Angel ignores the Pale Green Brigade, of which Esau is a member. So now Esau is being ignored. Now, I believe I told you in my other videos that if a character is being ignored or repelled or immunity or whatever, they ha if they do have initiative, but the only enhancements that they can play are cards that would allow them to get past this. It turns out I was mistaken. I always thought this was the rule, but I just looked it up. Esau has initiative to play whatever the buggery he wants. He, I mean, he's not going to get any further if he doesn't take care of this ignore slash immunity slash repel thing, but he can play whatever he wants, and so he decides to. Esau decides to be a real jerk and decides to activate an enhancement that's not going to affect Servant Angel, but it's going to get rid of another hero. He activates the card Death of Jacob, which is going to bring him up to two, uh, which doesn't really which, again, won't change a blasted thing as, as far as the battle is concerned, but allows him to discard a hero in a territory. So he selects his opponent's last remaining hero in his territory, Guiding, guiding Angel, 
and for some reason, the immortal being Guiding Angel dies. Uh, I digress. So, player two can't do anything else. Player one is still winning by Ignore. Servant Angel wins. All enhancements are discarded. Esau was defeated by Ignore, so he actually goes back to his territory. Servant Angel goes back to his territory, and there's another lost soul for player one. So the count goes now to 3-3, and we're tied again. Play passes back to player two. He draws three cards, Jude, Burial, and Chloe. In his preparation phase, he immediately activates his Burial, which allows him to discard any lost soul in play. This is only going to make any sense if he discards his own lost soul, because if it's discarded, he can't rescue it, so he discards one of his lost souls. And Burial also goes straight to the discard pile. He begins a rescue attempt with his mentor, and mentor uh, bands with Tabitha again. And player one, again, is scared off completely by the double digits, and... Sac and sacks another lost soul, which will bring the score to player two, four, player one, three, and that will end player two's turn. It's player one's turn again, and he draws Jubilee, seventh seal, and fourth seal. Player one is in a spot. He has to work pretty hard now, because if player two rescues one more lost soul, he's going to win. So he's going to try and beat him to the punch. He begins a rescue attempt with Servant Angel again, which will allow him to draw a card, and he draws Seventh Trumpet. Player two blocks with Esau again. Remember, evil capture cannot be negated. Esau is losing again, so he has initiative, and he activates the evil enhancement Slave Trade. He, or, well, he wants to. But actually, player one quickly plays Angel of the Lord, a good dominant, which can be played regardless of initiative because it's the dominant, which allows him to discard any evil character in play. He immediately selects his opponent's Esau, and so Esau the Hunter gets discarded before he can do anything. Servant Angel is no longer being blocked in his rescue attempt, so he wins by an opposition, or really here by removal, and so he gets that lost, score, uh, lost soul, which brings the score to 4-4. Four, four. We're tied once again. Fortunately for player one, he has way too many cards in his hand, uh, and he can't really play anything, and he has to discard three cards, so he proceeds to discard Jubilee, Seventh Seal, and Jacob's Grandsons. It's player two's turn again, and he's looking to end this. He draws three cards, Gift of the Magi, Shafat, and Misuse of Talents. He proceeds to activate Gift of the Magi, if his opponent ever draws a card by a special ability, not at the beginning of his turn, uh, player two will get to draw a card as well, which is pretty cool. Even though at the present he really doesn't think he's going to need it, because he makes a rescue attempt with his Gaius. Instead of presenting a block, uh, blocking character, however, player one activates the evil dominant Christian Martyr, which is the exact opposite of Angel of the Lord, and will allow him to discard any hero in play. He chooses the rescuing Gaius, and the rescue attempt terminates right then and there. To end his turn, player two puts Jude and Chloe into his territory and proceeds to end his turn. Player one starts his final turn, draws three cards, another lost soul, Dove and Herodian. The lost soul goes into his land of bondage, and he draws sick unto death. He begins a rescue attempt, which he hopes is his, with his servant Angel, and therefore draws a card, happens to be Shepherd. Well, much to his chagrin, thanks to Gifts of the Magi, Player One is now allowed to draw a card. So he does, and he draws the Harvest. Player Two blocks with Ur. Servant Angel and Ur are in something of a lockup with mutual destruction here. Player One has initiative, because Player Two played the last card. So, player one proceeds to play Fountains of Living Water, which will bump him up significantly and allows him to draw a card. Again, though, Gifts of the Magi is triggered, so player two gets to draw a card as well. Player one draws Sectarianism, and player two draws Temple Veil. Uh, Servant Angel is now winning, so... Player 2 has initiative. He proceeds to shut this down by activating the evil enhancement Slave Trade, which allows him to capture a hero in play and place in his land of bondage. 
he proceeds to capture Servant Angel. Wouldn't you like an angel as a slave? And that will end the rescue attempt because Servant Angel is now treated as a lost soul. It is put into Player 2's Land of Bondage, and that is just not going to work. The rescue attempt fails, and Player 2... Uh, rather, Player 1 ends his turn by placing Shepard and Herodian into his territory. Player 2 now plays through his final turn. He draws Fortress of Ashdod, Forced Labor, and Hard Bondage. He activate he uh, rather, he places Temple Veil vale face down beneath his Gifts of the Magi. Gifts of the Magi is active, but if he wants to, he can deactivate Gifts of the Magi by flipping it face down and flip Temple Veil vale face up on top of his artifact pile to activate Temple Veil. Vale. He doesn't want to. He proceeds to his rescue attempt with Mentor and Tabitha again. It scared him off before. But this time, Player 1 has to give him all he's got. So he blocks with Herodian. He is allowed to band to any evil character with Herod in the title. Unfortunately, he has none in his deck. So Herodian's kind of lonely out there. Player 1 is losing utterly, so he activates the evil enhancement Grievous Departure, which will bring him up a little bit. It forces his opponent to discard a card from his hand, so he does. He discards Heart Bondage, and allows him to draw a card. Little does he know that he just won. He draw the Son of God Dominant, which he can play at any time because of the Dominant, so he proceeds to play it. Son of God allows him to rescue any lost soul in play, so he goes ahead and he rescues his own lost soul and puts it in his land of redemption. His land of redemption now has five cards in it, uh, rather five lost souls in it. That means he automatically wins. The game is over, and player one wins the game five to four. That is how we play the redemption card game, and we will look at another exciting redemption card game next time. Tonight a thousand angels